Hey guys, Big Daddy and I are still on our adventure through the Mississippi Delta today. If you've missed any of our earlier adventures, please give them a look. Today, we're going to the Museum of the Mississippi Delta. Come along with us. Let's go explore. One of the nice surprises in Greenwood for me was the Museum of the Mississippi Delta. Some of you in my age group might remember it as the Cottonlandia Museum. The museum says it focuses on what it calls the five A's of art, art, archeology, span agriculture, antiques, and animals. Let's go in and have a look around. Upon entrance, you're met immediately by a very friendly staff and this beautiful quilt, and well, one of my favorite paintings in the museum. The museum boasts a fine Mississippi art collection. You'll see as we walk around Mississippi artwork that's made up of all types of media, most of which apparently came from the winners of the Mississippi Fine Arts Competition. You're going to see some watercolor, you're going to see some oil paintings, you're going to see some mixed media, some wood sculpture. Surely you can find a piece of Mississippi artwork in this museum that you can appreciate. The museum is able to showcase all this fine art because it hosts a statewide biannual Museum of the Mississippi Delta's Fine Arts Competition. The museum has a great collection of what I call the old Americana. You'll notice the old record player, the old butter churn, and the old camera. Here's one of the most scariest pieces in the museum for me. This is an old dentist drill. Of course, beside the Boy Scout uniform and the old telephone. Now you're going to take a look at the LaFleur County historic timeline and you'll notice several motion pictures were made in the Greenwood area. I chose to kind of give you a close-up view of some important parts because well it's so large that it's almost overwhelming. This exhibit opened in October of 2004 and it looks at well this big events in the Greenwood and LaFleur County history through kind of obviously a format of a timeline. You get to see the artifacts and documents and well photographs from the museum's collections. Now here is a really cool piece. I don't know how many of you have ever seen an actual old blunderbuss, but well here one is. This of course would have been a large bore gun and you'll notice the flared muzzle and it was well it would have been a short range weapon. Now we move on into the local military history exhibit and it focuses on people in and around the Florida County and, and their involvement in military history. This lady was the highest decorated female in the military during her time. This is a really cool example of a World War I uniform worn by a citizen of Greenwood and Lafour County. Of course Greenwood had an airfield and it was quite an extensive operation. I'm going to probably start skipping around some so that we can make it through the whole museum and we don't get bogged down in the minutia like I like to do when I visit a place like this in person. They have a fine example of a Blakely rifle cannon, which was probably best known for their use by the Confederates during, of course, the American Civil War. This particular cannon is called the Lady Polk. Episcopal Bishop and Confederate General Leonidas Polk was happy that his men named this gun in honor of his wife, Frances. 
it's always amazing to me to look at well the doctor's tools of the Civil War era. You can identify that amputation saw on, on top. This is the part where I remind you to turn your phone straight up and down and you touch that little subscribe button. The museum has a pretty incredible collection of Native American artifacts. You can see it's one of the most exquisite collections of pottery I've ever seen. Don't know that my photography skills allow you to appreciate the beadwork on display here. This collection has well, axes and game and nutting stones, arrowheads, and spear points, and of the polychrome pottery that you see from the Humber McWilliams site in northern Mississippi. This is a burial urn found in Alabama. This is probably my personal favorite vase in the museum. Just a few more seconds looking at pottery and we'll move on. This, uh, I call these my dog head bowls. I think they're pretty incredible. One of the things I was most surprised to see was this display of a mastodon fossil. It's just like the movie Ice Age. This animal probably existed about the same time frame and it's really a pretty complete skeletal display. I want to get you just a little bit different angle of the mastodon. Also in the museum, they have a Mississippi Swamp Room. And if you're kind of quiet, you can hear the sounds of the Mississippi Swamp, the alligators, the bullfrogs, insects, and the hoots of the owls, even. If you look closely, you can see many of the swamp creatures. You might see a black bear, a raccoon, a turtle, or even a duck. As you can see, these fossil remains were found near Tupelo, Mississippi. You have the spinal section of a Mosasaurus. And how can you possibly come into a museum about the Mississippi Delta and not discuss agriculture? You see the old John Deere tractor and the really incredible display about the evolution of agriculture and how it's changed with time, just like our world. Of course, I was walking through the displays probably in reverse order, but you'll notice this is a display on loan from the Smithsonian. Part of the Smithsonian exhibit deals with social change as well, and it's really hard to capture the uh, enormity of this exhibit and the quality of it on this video. Here's hoping that you will come check it out for yourself sometime. As you make your way from one room to another, you pass by this display about Jerry Rice, who I consider to be the greatest receiver of all time. He played college football a little bit down the road at Mississippi Valley. You make your way into the Greenwood LaFleur room and you're met by their family Bible. The Bible seemed to be a record of family genealogy. Greenwood LaFleur was the last chief of the Choctaw tribe before their removal to Oklahoma in the 1800s. Mount Mason was located on the northeast part of Greenwood and it burned to the ground in 1942. Greenwood LaFleur did so many things it's hard to address them all 
in a few quick seconds, but he encouraged other tribal chiefs to sign the Treaty of Dancing Rabbit Creek, which ceded the Choctaw lands in Mississippi to the U.S. government, but it also provided that any Choctaw who stayed would have reserved lands. Of course, the U.S. government failed to follow through on this part of the treaty. While many thought removal was inevitable, others made death threats against LaFleur because of this treaty. He stayed in Mississippi where he settled in Carroll County and became a U.S. citizen. He was elected to the state government as a legislator in the 1840s and during the Civil War, he sided with the Union. I hope you've enjoyed your visit at the Museum of the Mississippi Delta today. Just please give yourself plenty of time when you come on your own sometimes. And yes, like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.